bow is not it. So the problem with the long bow for this job is its longness. So what happens if you try to make a shorter bow with the same power from a single piece of wood? So I'll give you a short bow. Thank you. Some uh, protective equipment. <clears throat> right. Yeah, that's not worked at all, has it? Here's why. When a bow is drawn, the outside stretches so that it's longer than before. But the inside squeezes, making it shorter than before. So the bow has to handle two very different forces at the same time. With a shorter bow, the bending is much greater and the wood just isn't strong enough. So the Mongols came up with a brilliant idea. If there are two different forces, use two different materials. This is horn, it's buffalo horn, sort of thing they would have used. Pieces of this, which is, I mean, it's very tough. It doesn't mind being squashed. It can cope with that very well. And then on the outside of that is a layer of sinew like this, which is happy being stretched, and in fact, I can break it down a bit and we can... The sinew comes from tendons in a deer's hind legs, and its fibres are highly elastic. The combined properties of horn and sinew make for one ideal weapon. You actually bind sinew to this side of the bow, the back of the bow, you place horn plates on the inside of the bow, on the belly, and then you can, in a very short bow, you get the same drawing. Now, if you did that with a, just a wooden one like the one I just did... Well, you right. saw the results. Yeah. But this, you can draw and it can take a bigger curve. Wow, you can feel it. With buffalo horn on the inside and sinew on the outside, the bow can handle squeezing and stretching at the same time. It's like elastic. The Mongols developed not just a great weapon, but a great concept, the composite. Take two materials with useful properties and put them together to make something far better. As Genghis Khan might have said, it was easy once you knew how. Fast forward to the 21st century. These sections of the A380's outer skin are made from a composite of two materials. Like the buffalo horn in the Mongol bow, lightweight aluminium provides stiffness. But with a heavy impact, it will bend, then rupture completely. It needs a second material, like the sinew in the Mongol bow, to give it added strength. And Paul Hogg has given me an amazing suggestion. Glass. Well, it broke, obviously, but just tell me... I mean, I know I knew it would break, but tell yes. me why it broke and how it broke. Well, basically, it's, it's a brittle material, so it was deformed, cracks just propagated, some of them propagated all the way out, you can see the other ones have formed here. End of the story. An ordinary sheet of glass is very brittle. It looks perfectly clear, but it's actually riddled with microscopic cracks. The sudden impact makes the cracks ripple through the whole sheet. You can't build a plane out of that. But as I'm about to find out, there's a way to make glass strong enough to survive a bomb explosion. The outer skin of the world's biggest airliner, the Airbus A380, must be super light and super strong. So the designers borrowed an idea from the 12th century Mongol bow, combining two different materials to make a composite. In the A380, the first material is lightweight aluminium. But the second material must be incredibly strong to withstand high-speed impacts. Ooh, look at that. So materials engineer Paul Hogg is about to show me a very special form of glass. So I just put that in there, yeah? Yeah, put it, put it in the flame, sort of... So move it back towards the point of the flame. Keep, keep rotating it to, to, to distribute the heat. You'll feel it begin to go soft and a bit sort of floppy. Let's go and bendy. Let's go now. OK. Wow! Wow! We're still connected! Look at that! 
We are still connected. You may not be able to see it, but we are still connected by glass. That's it. Go. Here we go. This is just glass. It's just glass. So this is pure, ordinary glass that we've just coiled up again. Yeah. Why is this doing this? It's thinner and therefore more flexible, but it hasn't got the defects and cracks on the surface, which is why you can coil it quite nicely without it snapping. This is a glass fibre, and it's very different to ordinary glass. With no cracks, it's incredibly strong. It's about six to ten times the strength of steel. If this was steel wire or something, this is... This would carry about six to ten times as much weight as the steel wire would. I'm mesmerised by this stuff. These glass fibres can be woven like textiles to produce sheets of material. The next stage is to add liquid resin. When it dries, it sticks the fibres together to create glass in its strongest form. Fiberglass. Let's see if this window can be smashed. A hammer. Uh, so I'll just hit it. That would have done the glass, wouldn't it? I think it would have done. Try it. Don't be shy. Give it a, give it a good welling. Glass fibres provide the strength. The individual fibres might break, but the cracks can't spread from one to another. It's quite surprisingly tough, isn't it? Yes. And fibreglass is even tougher when combined in a composite with aluminium. It's called glass-reinforced aluminium, or glare for short. The two materials are sandwiched together in layers. The aluminium provides stiffness, like the buffalo horn in the Mongol bow. Fiberglass is like the sinew in the Mongol bow. It provides the strength that aluminium lacks. So, how will glare stand up to the dreaded chicken gun? It's the, the glass fibre stopping the cracks growing from one layer of aluminium to the other. That's what we're looking to see. No pressure here, but it's the same thickness as the aluminium that it went straight through. And we're hoping that it feels... I mean, that feels flimsy to me. It's also scarily light. A short bow made from a single material will bend then break. The composite bow survives. An aircraft skin made from a single material bends, then ruptures. Can the composite skin withstand the impact? OK, I've come down to the business end of our little chicken firing range here because I really want to see what happens when the chicken hits the glare. Does it bend? Does it come back? I want to see how it behaves. Ready, Richard? Yeah, I think so. You're okay. Out of time. Three, two, one. No. Oh. Well, it's not very nice being that close to a very fast chicken, but it's resisted it. It hasn't gone through. There's a dent, but the glare survives. It does work. The two materials working together are better than either alone. That's fantastic, isn't yeah. it? For the A380's designers, glare is the perfect combination of high strength and low weight. Vital for an airliner this size. It's 25% lighter than aluminium, one reason why the world's biggest airliner has better fuel consumption per passenger than a family car. And thanks to composites, an idea inspired by the Mongol bow, it's tough enough for the rigours of flight, even with a novice pilot. So, Richard, if you want to take control of the aeroplane now, if you get your hand on the stick ready to take over. Really? Yep. Right. Go for it. You put the full stick to the right now. Whoa! There you go. Whoa! That's it. And it feels it as light as a feather. Are we doing aerobatics in the world's no, largest aerobatic? aerobatic. When it's in the air, the A380's enormous size is not a problem. 
But in the next stage of my investigation, I plan to find out why size is a big issue. 